Okay. Um, so the, in the next conversation we're going to be having, uh, the minority slams uh, Baumia over 24-hour economy remarks. Now, the story here on citynewsroom.com says, in, sharp, in a sharp critique of uh, Vice President Dr. Mohamedou Baumia's comments on the 24-hour economy policy, the minority in parliament has questioned the Vice President's economic credentials and uh, challenge his claims about the policy's implementation. Now, Dr. Bamiya on Monday, November 20th, dismissed former President John Romani Mohammed's understanding of the 24 hour economy policy, asserting that it was already begin, uh, being implemented in Ghana uh, through the extended operations of hospitals, fuel companies, and some chop bars. And now, um, in a response, the minority on Tuesday, November 21st, during debates on the 2024 budget, took aim at Dr. Baumia's economic record, pointing out that Ghana's um, economy was ailing despite his extensive experience as an economist. Now, Isaac Adongo, a ranking member on the Finance Committee of Parliament, questioned Dr. Baumia's ability to understand the 24 hour economy concept, giving the uh, um, um, abysmal state or dismal state of the economy under his watch all right let me just uh, guess you yeah, can, yes <clears throat> before i get to yes. that, that major issue um yeah, my friend said that uh, uh, john mahama uh, was not the next in line mm. to uh, president mills and I, I don't know where that is coming from because when you look at NDC's history so far you know um, uh, professor tamil succeeded uh, jerry john ronnie mm. professor mm. mills was his vice president mm. and succeeded him. Mm. And John Mahama was uh, Professor Mills' vice president. president. Yeah. So I don't see where the argument is coming from that he was not next in line. Now, uh, the, when we make the argument, when I made the argument that um, Alan Schumante was the next in line, it doesn't mean that I thought that it should necessarily be handed the position. Okay. But I'm saying that what had happened um, during this um, their primary, it didn't happen before in the whole of at least the. Um, this fourth republic. Mm. It, it didn't happen. We, we saw how Edubahin came, and then we saw how Kufo succeeded him. Okay. And then when Kufo, Kufo ruled for eight years, mm. and Nana Kufado succeeded him, but then Nana Kufado had contested that several challenge Kufo, yeah, several yeah. times. So we saw the way they were moving. And so it's obvious when we make that um, assumption that, yeah, from the way things were going, and then Tremonti having also contested a number of times with Kufado, it was obvious, and it was obvious to him himself. But the main issue is that. Uh, Alan Chimantin and others who were contested, who were aspirants, they complained that the, the field was not level. That was the, that was the main thing. You see, so, so you would see that the, there was the, a kind of determination, decision by, by, by the powers that be to, to just force somebody, force that somebody on them. That, that mm. is what we are talking mm. about. So I'm not saying that. So if, if you say the argument is redundant, next in line argument is redundant, well, we didn't cause it, it, it when you look at the way. <laughs> yeah, yes, I get you. Yeah, we didn't cause it. So, so anyway, um, so can I move to... Yes, let's go ahead. Yes, let's, let's, let's remember the way Dr. Baumia described the 24-hour oh, economy, uh, economy uh, vision. He said that it is not a bright idea. Mm. Then he went on and said it is a bad idea. That's true. Yes. So let's let's. So he said it is not a bright idea. It is a bad idea. And then he told us that chop bars are already uh, operating. operating 24 hours. He, he talked about hospital. He talked about the police. And he talked about you can just be in your bedroom and uh, um, maybe send money, transfer money to somebody, and, and all of that. And so he told us that is the 24-hour economy. That is completely wrong. That's completely wrong. Even hospitals, <coughs> excuse me, even hospitals that are operating 24 hours. In the night, there are only skeletal staff. Skeletal staff, and I don't know how many of them anyway, how many hospitals are operating. But that is not a conscious effort in all hospitals because of the kind of services they pro pro provide. And people yeah. would be, people who fall sick in the night and they will send them to hospitals. So there has to be some staff to take care of them and all of that. That is not a conscious vision or policy to make the country go a 24 hour economy. Mm. You see, so if Baumia is telling us that it's not a bright idea and he's saying it's a bad idea, is he also telling us that then it is a bad idea that the hospitals are operating 24 hours? It is a bad idea that you can use your phone and uh, um, transfer money in the night and all of that. It is a bad idea that the police are uh, yeah, working uh, in the night. It is a bad idea that what else did he mention? He mentioned something else. And um, so, you see, <clears throat> when you look at it, you'll see that <clears throat> he was just too anxious to take a swipe at John Mahama. That was it. That was it. That's why this policy, he didn't take his time to look at the policy very well. It is a vision, you know, and, and in any case, you see the 24-hour economy, you would see that it's a blast. 
And NDC, we are not looking for uh, credibility for the policy or for the vision from Dr. Baumi at all. He's not going to give us, he, the, the, the man himself has a credibility deficit, you know, because of all the promises. <clears throat> and that's why people are calling him a liar and all of that. And so we don't need that. We, in fact, we would rather take uh, endorsement from the TUC, which we have already. The TUC General Secretary said that this is a game changer. And several other people are speaking about it. And so we are not going to rely on Dr. Baumia's uh, assessment of the, of, the, of the program. Everybody should understand that. Look, this is just a vision. You know, the, the one who has the vision, who just put out the vision, and then the policy makers and the technocrats are going to add flesh. You see, so what we should, we should know, generally we know that this policy is going to let people work. And it's not every workplace. Mm -hmm. Many, many workplaces and people who would want to um, uh, roll on to the program, especially the manufacturing sector and all of that, they will identify sectors that when they operate the 24 hour, they will add to the productivity of this nation. They will create jobs for the people okay. and they, the revenue will go up. Mm -hmm. there, will, there will be growth and all of that, you see. And then they would incentivize those uh, organizations. We have to provide security and all of that. So the point is that there's going to be a blueprint and that blueprint, even the TUC will make an input into the blueprint. Mm. And so people, they, they are rushing too much uh, to say that, well, this policy is not, it's not good. Meanwhile, it, it, they just don't know that it was coming. It's a blast in there. When, look, when we look at the people who are endorsing it, I don't think that we are going to uh, be taking any notes from Dr. Baumia, who is just too anxious to mm. just rubbish anything John Mahama would say. So every time he's just waiting to see what else is John Mahama going to say, and then he goes out and then he throws tantrums. Because when you are saying that, this is a bad idea, it's not a bright idea. When you, the same person you are telling us, some of the uh, organizations are already operating in the, uh, in the night, uh, clearly it doesn't make sense. So I, I think that this is a policy that the youth must be very happy about. And in fact, indeed, that is why the General Secretary of the TUC said, he said that the youth should be very happy because this is going to bring jobs, because mm -hmm. it's going to create opportunities for people. In fact, people may do three jobs. Uh, that would not be the advice of anybody anyway that you do th three mm -hmm. shifts. Mm -hmm. You know, but two shifts, yes. A lot of people will do two shifts because yeah. you can work from around maybe 7 a.m. to about 2 p.m. Then you can work from about... 2 p.m. to about 10 p.m. and then somebody may work in the night and so you yeah, can do multiple time. industries as well yes so, yes yeah. so clearly and and like like i said when for public sector institutions those that provide essential services and crucial services and those that would would provide services that will help the manufacturing and the private companies to flourish um throughout 24 hours they would be rolled in mm. and you know there has to be a proper legal framework for all of that you know so the government will take care of all of that. Like I said already, the technocrats and the policymakers, this is the vision. Once the, 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 the nation builder has put the vision out there and it's okay. causing commotion everywhere, and Dr. Baumia <laughs> cannot sleep, my friend Pargrave cannot sleep, you will hear him right now. They will, they will just keep on going and, and throwing everything in. You know, now people are going to sit down now. The policymakers are going to sit down. Yeah. And we are going to consult. And, and then let, let me um, 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 just add that, you see, when, when you look at the uh, free SHS, for instance, you see the reason the free SHS has failed um, I, to some extent, a very large extent, or it's uh, well inflicted with uh, lots of problems and uh, difficulties in facilities and all that, it was because the foundation was not laid properly. The infrastructure was not put in place. See, so when, when uh, John jo Mahama said he was going to embark on a progressive free senior high education was providing the facilities, providing infrastructure, buildings, and all of that. They came up and said, no, we are going to do it. We'll just wake up one day and do it. You know? And okay. so very soon, he'll Fair be enough. talking, my friend will be talking about the mobile money interoperability. No, but no, why are you worried about what he's going to be talking about? Let well, him, I, let I, him I do. I, I've been listening to him <laughs> these days a lot. And I, like I said, you see, you, we just keep going. But when he, when he talks about that, then I'll come in and, and, and give him a little education about why that is working very well. Paul, and then to let him see. David, like, you, have your, boss, you have your personal David, it is not his, his boss. <laughs> David, is he? His boss, his boss is, he, is, not, is not the, uh, 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 what, the uh, what, what do you call it? The, I, what, uh, do you Eric, call it? digitalization. Eric, and we'll see that they are trying to Let's, 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 let's hear. David, you see, we're playing that let's, let's hear about you. David, yeah. I'm glad that we all had an opportunity to sit in a classroom. Mm. How Eric is behaving now mm. is a clear indication that had we been in the same class, mm. he would be copying my notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a clear indication. <laughs> but let's, let's start off this way. Mm. The former president of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama, mm. has stated that he would 
run a 24-hour economy. Mm. Okay. Before I come there, Eric stated that we introduced the nesting line and that for the NDC, they always have a nesting line because Vice President Ivan Satamils succeeded mm. Jerry John Rollins and Vice President Dramani Mahama succeeded Atamils. Yeah. That is presupposed to mean that the next flag bearer of the NDC, according to Alifu, no, is no, Professor J. Nanu. No, 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 exactly no so, it's fine. Yeah. I just need to drop that there. No, I need to yeah, drop it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. no, I think exactly it's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, 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 yeah let me exactly stretch it a little so. bit. And well, then well, let me move on. Okay, to, okay, let, me, let me move on into my, my major yeah. submission. 24 hour economy. Yeah. Now, you see, I find it very disingenuous mm. to think that for someone who has been a former president of the Republic of Ghana before, who has stated that he wants to run a 24-hour Ghanaian economy, might not have profiled the Ghanaian economy, or Ghana as a country. Ghana is 16 regions, mm. over 275 constituencies, mm. many multiple districts, okay. and some districts go to sleep. There's no economic activity even after 5 o'clock. Mm. You need to profile the country called Ghana. When you profile the country called Ghana, you realize that Ghana is an agrarian economy. Yeah. Ghana being an agrarian economy is a demand-driven economy. Mm. That's the country we live in. And so when there is demand, you would realize that people would give you your services that you need mm. on a 24-hour basis. Having the thinking and the thought pattern that Ghana needs to develop faster in the right thinking and framework of the president and other Dan Kufano, with the vice president of Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and the flag bearer of the new patriotic party. And I'm glad he states that I will talk about digitalization because there is no other conversation that will drive as an engine of a 24 hour economy than the bedrock and the foundation that has been set with digitalizing the Ghanaian economy. When Dr. Baumia started the dream of digitalizing the Ghanaian economy, the NDC said he had run away from economy and economics and started with digitalization. Mm. And what has digitalization got to do with the economy? Today, we are proving to the NDC that yes, of a truth, David, you can sit in your home. And when we talk about mobile money interoperability, the amount of money that the NDC had proposed to spend, we spent less of that to ensure that Kweku does not move from his house to a yellow umbrella. Issa does not move from his house to a blue umbrella. Kwame does not move from his house to a red umbrella. And um, 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 Senor does not move from his house to a green umbrella. Supposed to mean Glow, Tigo, MTN, Vodafone, and um, Zane at the mm. time. Mm. Today, people can send money. And through mobile money interoperability, you cannot discount that. Government has put together a payment platform, a government.gov that works on a digital platform and a digital infrastructure that people can access government services on a 24-hour basis. Mm. You don't need anybody. Mm. All you need is a digital platform to ensure that you can access that. You can look for your passport, fill your forms for your passport. You can renew your NHIS. You can buy electricity. You can buy water. All of this on a 24-hour services. Mm. I, 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 I like wache. Wache is one of my favorite foods. And you can get Reggie Rockstone wache on a 24-hour basis. So really, when we talk about running a 24-hour economy, mm. and I state it, that the thesis that we have prepared as a new patriotic party and a government of President Nanado Danko Kufuado, which the panel of academicians have realized that we own the thesis, We've prepared the thesis. Mm -hmm. We've passed the thesis. We have been awarded a doctorate and a professorial. The NDC <laughs> is picking a thesis they cannot defend. I told you this. I knew this was coming. Yes, <laughs> the NDC is picking a thesis they cannot defend. Which is why, you know, I mean, that is why I said, if I sat in the same class with he, Alifu, he will, copy he will be copying my notes. <laughs> because clearly that is what it is. And we need, to, we need to take very serious concerns that come from Dramani Mahama on some policies that he's proposed. He's proposed that he will cancel teacher licensure exams. Mm. All around the world, David, 
teacher licensure exams is one of the most accredited processes within which teachers with their profession that they have can be accredited so that should there be an opportunity where Musa or Senyo or Etonam or Kwame or any other person from any part of this country wants to travel from point A to point B can go with a license and say, I'm a licensed certified teacher yeah. from country A, country B, country C. Really, when the country wants to move forward with serious issues that has been done, Parliament has passed an act, Act 778, in 2008. And I don't know. I don't know where um, Dramani Mahama was when this was passed. In 2008, we passed this NTC, the National Teachers Council, and it's to ensure that teachers who have gone through the educational settings would come through a licentia exams, and through the licentia exams, you're able to check their methodologies, you're able to check their pedagogical teaching, and you're able to make sure that should in case we need to transfer teacher from Volta region to the north or from the north to eastern or from eastern to the central, we have teachers that are accredited well and we know that they are qualified enough to teach our children. Mm -hmm. I am concerned for Ghana to be in the hands of Dramani Mahama because with all the solutions he's proposing, there are policies that our government has implemented and our government is striving on it. Look at his policy to scrap betting. He's going to scrap 10% of the betting levy. David, you should travel along the he, length he and breadth. Review. Way. Yes, review. What does review mean? The yeah. length and breadth. When you travel across <laughs> the length and breadth of this country mm. and you look at young people and how young people are involved in betting mm. and how putting a tax on betting can deteriorate and, and eschew young people who do not want to spend their time doing meaningful things would be, as, would be derailed from it. They are betting everywhere in this country. Government is looking to expand the revenue basket. When we implemented the e-levy, e at a stage when we had done a research and realized that there were 44 million SIM cards in this country, if you take 33 million people and you take away children, and you even use the voting numbers of 18 million people, it meant that the adults like had, had two, three, four, five SIM cards. There was a lot of fraud. The government of President Nanado Dankwe Kufuadu and Alhaji Dr. Mahmoud Mamia thought outside the box to ensure that every single person registered their SIM cards. Today, it's become a thing of the past of someone using your SIM card to perpetuate fraud. We brought in a digitalized address system. Through that digitalized address system, every single property in this country has a unique address such that if you are looking to trace anybody, you can find that person in this country. What else can we not do with the running of a 24-hour of a country? And I have their data here, and I'll, I'll go according to it. The things that they seek to do on the 24 hours, they say that they'll have manufacturing companies, private sector. David, you and I know that in this country, manufacturing companies and industries all across the length and breadth of the industrial area from Kaneshi to Spintes Road to Tema. They already do a 24-hour service. Really? Not really. No, they have a system in place. Let's what? be truthful. Are they doing it? They do a 24-hour. I know a they lot, of, do a I know a lot hour. of companies do. We have but... e-pharmacy. Yesterday, I bought, for, I bought medications online. Mm. It was delivered to me. We have pharmacies that do 24 hours in this country. True. We have filling stations that do 24 hours in this country. Yeah, but you're not the majority. No, no, no. You see, you see, let's, let's, let's. let's. When we say a 24 hour economy, do you it's know? It's like the majority of people are involved in it. Let's, 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 let right? me give you. Do you know what? All around the world, mm. to be able to even get to the state mm. of being recognized as a country that is ready for a 24 hour economy, there are factors that must be put in place. Okay. You, you can go to Australia. Mm. You can go to the big, big globalized countries. Majority of them are not even considered by agencies that rate economies as 24. You understand? We have some parts of the Ghanaian economy running the 24-hour services. Mm. We don't have the full moral fabric of the Ghanaian economy running 24-hour. You understand? But what keeps the economy running? The engine is on. We have banks. You know, we have banks. We have people who go to work as bankers. On a 24-hour basis, they run shifts. They're in the IT department. 
to ensure that the system is working. So really, if you are proposing a 24-hour service on, manufacture, on major construction projects, mm. we have major construction projects in this country that, that do on the 24 so. hours, which is why I said the Ghanaian economy is an agrarian economy. It's a demand and supply economy. The third point he says is retailing, retail trading um, centers like pharmacies, fuel stations. Let me tell you, and that's what I've said. I know fuel stations that I don't want to mention their name because I'll be doing advert for them. They run 24 hours. I can mention Guel because Guel runs 24 hours when you are traveling on the major highway. They run 24 hours. So oh. really, on oh yes. Major, only on the major highway. Yeah, but people, people, <laughs> but, but even in Accra, I can mention Zen. Zen runs 24 well, hours. Let, let, their filling stations so are around here. I'm going according to their, their data they have put in place. They said public institutions. I don't know where that data is Oh, from, right. But, it is but, from, it is from the NDC. No, that's okay. It is from the NDC. That's, Allow that's, me to finish my point. Let, I didn't interject. Let, 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 so, let it be. No, I am mm -hmm. going on and on because I am educating the Ghanaian people on the right things that no, are being done on MPS. You're only confused On MPS. You get your chance. MPS Terminal 3. We have a paperless port. Who brought that idea? So really, when we are talking about a 24-hour economy... So in your opinion, it already exists? The 24-hour economy is in motion. Okay. Oh. We are already doing it. So okay. It's, it's already idea. implemented. Okay. And it is ongoing. <laughs> so really, the NDC and their John Dramani Mahama mm. should not pick the manuscript of the MPP and rebrand it and rephrase it into other things okay. that are already fair, happening fair in enough. the Ghanaian economy. Fair, fair lastly, free SHS, David, lastly, yeah. he spoke mm. about free SHS. Free SHS has impacted 5.8 million people. David, I don't know where my good friend Kwesi would have been when he tells me every day that when he goes to his village and sees his friend Koju, who is now, and with the greatest of respect, works with the public um, transport. He's a mate, very intelligent gentleman who could not continue school after GHS because his parents did not have money. Kwesi tells me that with a lot of pain on a regular basis. President Anado Danko Ekufado has ensured that every single child, the lowest level of education will be senior high school, free TV, free SHS. Today, that is a possibility. 5.8 million people. Okay. We have also introduced STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I love that is oh, unprecedented in this country. <laughs> All right, okay. So really... Yes. So let me... Let me oh, no, 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 you no, but you David, yes, I'm just... Uh, yeah, let me conclude. Yes. Um, really, seconds, when, yes, when we are talking about free SHS, we are talking about credibility. Mm. If there's anybody who has lost credibility, it is in a re rejected NDC, John Dramani Mahama, okay, because the Ghanaian enough. people do not want him. All right, fair enough. Eric, yes. your response to... Yes, Bob yes, Grace. yes. First of all, you see, I, I, I cautioned my friend already that uh, he should not be going like uh, how Dr. Baumia is going. And uh, that uh, we, we need substance. You know, when he started, he, he talked about the number of districts in this country. Some of the districts, there's no demand for uh, productivity uh, for 24 hours and all of that. And then he went around and around and then came, came to say that there are certain companies that... Um, are already operating 24 hours and all of that. The same idea that uh, Baumian says it's not a bright idea, it's a bad idea. He says certain companies are doing it, and so he said it's a process, it's in motion and all of that. You see, this is just a big confusion. A couple of companies embarking or operating in the night is not a conscious government policy to encourage uh, uh, the private sector and then uh, some institutions in the public sector to work in the night and provide the necessary facilities and tax breaks, security and all of that, transportation and all of that. We don't have that in this country. And that is why the General Secretary of TUC says that this is a game changer. If it's already in, in motion, he wouldn't be saying this is a game changer. It's a game changer. And so we don't need a lecture from them to tell us that, oh, this is already going on, this is already on. Now, he, he, he talked about it, so if there's demand, there's no demand, if there's demand, no. It, the, you see, the, the, the demand will be there, but the mentality of all of us in this country is that when we work to 5 o'clock, we shall close and go. If I need anything, unless tomorrow, except a few places, those places that is mentioning that they are, some of them, they are even exaggerating. We don't even know about them. We don't know about the girls that operate 24 hours in the night and all of that. But they, throw, yeah, but they throw all of this in. And then he, he, he moved on. You see, he talked about um, uh, digitalization. The digitalization, you see, what he forgets is that they have not laid the infrastructure. John Mahama laid the infrastructure. He built the fiber optics uh, infrastructure, the wiring. And then we have the Accra Digital Center. Everybody knows where it is, right? Yeah. At Kaneshi over there. Do you think he was just doing it for fun? 
or they are not going to move on and do other things that they, they have come to do. But the infrastructure was already there when they, they came to meet it. And so it is very easy to say that oh, we are doing mobile money interoperability and all of that because the infrastructure has been laid by somebody already. And the infrastructure that was laid, if the person had continued to be in power, he would move to other stages, he would progress. That is it. That is why he, he laid those infrastructures, because he wanted to move. And that's why when I, I, I cited the example of the uh, uh, free SHS, you see, that's, that was where I, I came in. I said that he was preparing for it. He was, and, and he was doing it progressively. He built uh, day schools and, and all of that. And then gradually, once the infrastructure was set, everything would move. It, the the uh, mobile money interoperability and all of that is, is going on very well because the infrastructure is already there. And Baumia didn't build that infrastructure. Nana Kufado didn't build that infrastructure. It was put in place by John Mahama. So he has to understand that very well. Then he, he also talked about the money that the uh, uh, NDC was going to um, use in doing the uh, mobile money interoperability. Uh, is that a word? Interoperability. Ability, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The money that was going to use, they use far less. Well, of course, then one thing he has pointed out is that then NDC had the, 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 the vision of, of going there anyway already. And then besides, you see, we are, we are not interrogating that to see what has gone into the policy and who is doing it and how much they've gone and all of that yet. If that is what we, have, we need to interrogate. Brigade, we shall we shall bring our facts and then we go into that. So throwing that in, I don't think it's going to help very much. Then you also um, talk about the licensure exams. I don't know whether um, uh, Councillor, because that is not one of the things I thought. But he was just talking about everything that your mama says he, he wants to do. But you see, let's be very careful. What he, he talked about is that licensure exams is a very important tool or factor in, 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 in the world, the whole place. Or, or that's what he said. He said something like that. It is not true. It is a licensing. Licensing for teachers to have license. Nobody is saying they shouldn't have license. But obtaining How the you, yeah, I well, I'm a lawyer. I'm, I'm a lawyer. I have yeah. my license, practicing yeah. license. Yeah. I didn't write any bar exams. Mm. I didn't write any bar exams to get my practicing license. How do you and get a there, license? I, 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 yes, because once everything is factored into the curriculum, when you go to school, you write exams. You see, these teachers, they've gone to school for about four years, mm. uh, about eight months, yeah. about they've, they have, uh, they've taken about 50 courses, they've written mm. several exams. All these things can be factored into the exams. And once they come out, there will be other ways of giving them in-service training. You don't need, they don't need to write all those exams in school. Why go would, through all why that would process. CTAG then support the idea of licensure exams? CTAG, CTAG can support, anybody can support. There are other they are the ones train the teachers. Yes, but, but I'm saying that. And they, is, they think it's a good idea. Well, well, they may think so. Others don't think so. And they, there, are, there are academicians, I, many I don't academicians understand. also. If the people who are training the but, teachers say that they think that a license well, a a trained, exam will, be, will be also is, be good you see, in addition because, to what they are doing. It is, it is because the kind of training we have now, mm. they have not factored in the fact that we need to teach them several things over there so that when they come out, they, will, they would have been properly trained already. That's why when they come, they still have to do other things. That's why I'm, I'm giving you an example of lawyers. We don't write licensure exams. We don't write by so, exams. So in are US, you yes, there's we, no professional body, um, professional group of people that write licensure well, they, exams? They, they, no, I, we are saying that for teachers, mm -hmm. for teachers for the training they have gone through, we, the Jomama thinks that, well, look, they, whatever it is that the Lancetia exam is supposed to equip them with, they can be equipped with those things during their training in school. And I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. You can't say that because uh, there are organizations that do it, and so teachers must necessarily do it. And when they have gone through all but the, that training... But unless they do it, so why shouldn't they, te well, yeah, the, why shouldn't so, they so teachers that, do that's, it? But how about lawyers? Lawyers don't do it. So why shouldn't teachers do it? So that's, that's the question. Argument. Yes. So I'm saying that, look, let's interrogate the particular... A, 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 a group of uh, professionals mm. and see whether we, we think they need it. Somebody says that they, I don't think they need it because look, and the, 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 the last one they wrote, I think, there were several of them that failed after they have trained for years in school. Yeah, but you can train for years. We don't and know, then you come and then you, can, you can't teach. Our, we all know how our education system is. Yes, but, but for, me, for me as a lawyer, once I pass through the law school and I come out, I get my license of practice. Nobody can tell me that after I come out of the law school. It is different, like in other countries. There, there are, there, in the US, for instance, they write by exams. You know, Ghana, we don't do it. So I'm saying that teachers equally, well, they, can, they can incorporate all that we need them to get through the Lancetia exam. They can incorporate all of them to the curriculum. What is so difficult about this? But the point is that once it is coming from John Mahama, we need to find a way to rubbish it, of course. Uh, Pargrave and the... Uh, and the uh, I haven't heard uh, Baumia himself talk about this particular one yet, but he's going to come out there. If he's going to continue with the way he's going, that anything your mama says, he has to come out and tell the whole world that it is a bad idea, it is not a bright idea. And meanwhile, 
We have several of his own promises, several of his promises that have, have become lies that, that he was not able to do. And he talked about the, the, the Zongo communities, they would uh, uh, invest about $50 million uh, equivalent every year, every single year into the Zongo community. They haven't done it. They talk about build, uh, no house will be left within 18 miles, no house will be left in this country without toilets. Okay, we still let's, have let's, houses. let's wrap so, it up. So, the, so he <clears throat> is the one that has the credibility deficit. Okay. Uh, the, uh, and so we are not Fair looking enough. for any endorsement from uh, Baumia uh, or my friend Pargrave or MPP activists. No, we don't at all. Because they will never come and embrace okay. anything or any vision, any good vision. So I, con I will continue to uh, fall back on uh, the TUC, for instance, the General Secretary of TUC, he says that this is a game changer, and I believe that one better than uh, what uh, Dr. Bamiya has said, that it is a bright, uh, a bright whatever, it's not a bright idea, it's a bad idea. I believe okay. uh, TUC right. General Fair Secretary enough. far more than Let's Dr. Bamiya on this.